Pater omnipotens et ene Deus, et mitere digneris sanctum angium tuum de celis, que custodiat foveat protegat visitet et quod effendat omnes habitantes in ac habitaculo, per Christum Dominum nostrum.
Samaritanus est tu, et de demonium habes. Respondit Jésus, ego demonium non habeo, et honorifico patre meum, et vos in honoras disne. Ego tem non quero gloria meam, est qui querat et judicet. Amen, amen, dico vobis, e quis sermonem meum serva verit, mortem non videbit in eternum. Dixerunt ergo iudei, non coniovimus quia demonium abes. Abraham mortus est, et profete tu dicis, si quis sermonem meum serva verit, non gustavit mortem in eternum. Non qui tu maiores patre nostro Abraham, qui mortus est, et profete mortuissum. Quem te ipsum pacis, respondit Jesus, sego glorifico me ipsum gloria mea nihil est, est pater meus qui glorificat me, Quem vos dit citis quia Deus vester est, et non conio vistis eum, ego tem novi eum, et silix ero, quia non scio eum, ero simili sub obisum mendax. Sed scio eum, et semonem eius a servo. Abraham pater vester exultavit, ut videret diem eum, videt et gav visus est. Dixerunt ergo iudei ateum, quadragintanos non dum abes et Abraham vidisti. Dixit eis in Iesus, amen amen dico vobis, ante quam Abraham fieret ego sum. Dulerunt ergo lapides ut iacerem in eum, Iesus totem abspondit se et exhibit et templo. Thank <laughs> you. 
the epistle, the second from the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews. Brethren, Christ being come as high priest of the good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not of this creation, neither by the blood of goats or of cows, but by his own blood, entered once into the holies, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and of oxen and the ashes of a heifer, being sprinkled, sanctify such as are defiled to the cleansing of, of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who by the Holy Ghost offered himself unspotted unto God, cleanse our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And therefore he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of his death for the redemption of those transgressions which were under the former testament, they that are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance in Christ Jesus our Lord. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. At that time, Jesus said to the multitudes of the Jews, Which of you shall convince me of sin? If I say the truth to you, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth the words of God. Therefore you are hear them not, because you are not of God. The Jews therefore answered and said to him, Do not we say well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and you have dishonored me. But I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth us. Amen, amen, I say to you, if any man keep my word, he shall not see death forever. The Jews therefore said, Now we know that thou hast a devil, and one is dead as a prophet. And thou sayest, If any man keep my word, he shall not taste death, death forever. Are thou greater than our father Abraham, who is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom dost thou make us thyself? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father that glorifies me, of whom you say that he is your God, and you have not known him. But I know him, and, I, and if I shall say that I know him not, I shall be like to you a liar. But I do know him, and do keep his word. Abraham your father rejoiced, that he may, might see my day. He saw it, and was glad. The Jews therefore say to him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, Before Abraham was made, I am. They took up stones therefore to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. He has announcements for this week, dear faithful. Please uh, take good note for next Sunday, which will be Palm Sunday, 14th of April. The first Mass is at 7 instead of 7.30, exceptionally. So uh, half an hour earlier than usual for the first Mass. This is because of the blessing of palms. Uh, which will take place half an hour before the Sunday Mass at 8.30. So, you, dear faithful of the Second Mass, uh, come early, half an hour, 8.30, for the blessing of palms and distributions of palms for Palm Sunday. We ask some prayers, dear faithful, for his Excellency Bishop Tissier de Malray, who had to undergo a surgery, and because of the quite poor health, 
had to postpone the ordinations last Saturday to the minor orders. Uh, so we uh, pray for the prompt <coughs> recovery. Bishop Tissier de Malray. Please uh, take good notes for the spiritual retreats in July, since there was a mistake in last week's bulletin about the precise time. At, in fact, it starts with the men's retreat, another women's. The men's retreat from 8th to 13th July, and women's retreat from 15th to 20th July. You will be able to read the rest in your bulletin. Be careful of the different masses, time of masses during this uh, week, as there is also a recollection for the school on Friday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Dear faithful, this Sunday is called Passion Sunday, because the Church from now on, until Easter Sunday, occupies herself in a special manner with the consideration of the Passion of Jesus Christ. <coughs> this Passion Week, the Holy Week, Good Friday, this is the most important matter of our faith, because the mystery of our sanctification, the mystery of our justification, cannot be explained without the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Saint Augustine says, there is nothing that conduces more to salvation than always to think what the God-made man has suffered for us. And so, dear faithful, we have to uh, take the advice, of course, of the liturgy and of this uh, uh, very, very precious season of Lent and Passion uh, season to meditate upon the Passion of Christ. St. Bernard also, nothing is more efficacious for the curing of the wounds of our conscience and purifying our souls than continually to meditate on the sufferings of Jesus Christ. St. Albertus Manus even says that the devout meditation of the Passion of Jesus Christ is much more profitable to a man than to fast a whole year with bread and water. Well, because, and all the saints uh, told us, you have to have recourse to the meditation of the Passion of Jesus Christ as a remedy against all kinds of evils and a great help against all sorts of temptations. This is the reason why we have the whole reading of the Passion during the prayers in the Roman ritual for the agonizing. And so, dear faith, we will take your missiles. You will have it next Sunday or Palm Sunday, but read the Passion already. New Missal. You have it also on Tuesday, Wednesday of the Holy Week, and of course Good Friday. And we can see how already those who attended the Passion of Christ found their own salvation in the Passion. We have the way of the cross is uh, uh, only uh, pictures left unveiled in this church as we have to look and meditate on this way of the cross. You can see Simon of Cyrene who helped to our Lord to carry his cross as our Lord was exhausted. <coughs> Simon was a peasant who had settled near Jerusalem. Our Lord rewarded him for his uh, help with the gift of faith. His two sons, Simon of Cyrene's two sons, Alexander and Rufus, became Catholics and 
according to reliable accounts, Rufus died a bishop, Tortosa in Spain and Alexander as a martyr in Rome. The pious woman, Veronica, who uh, out of love and compassion wiped the disfigured countenance of our Lord in his way of the cross. Well, our Lord not only imprinted his countenance on her veil, but certainly also on her soul. The good thief himself crucified, named Dismas. He repented, converted, and received the gift of faith. Lord, remember me when thou shalt come into thy kingdom. And he received the gift of salvation. Amen, I say to thee, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. The centurion who was in command of the soldiers when our Lord was led to, to Calvary. Seeing the earthquake and other miracles of the crucifixion of our Lord, he was filled with holy fear and he said, Indeed, this was the Son of God. The people who were witnesses of the crucifixion, all the multitude of them that were come together to that site and saw the things that were done, returned striking their breasts, as we learn. Which means, well, they had contrition for their sins and they had uh, a believing heart. Well, dear faithful, still now, this great devotion of the world cause, uh, this meditation upon the passion of our Lord, is a very powerful means of sanctification for ourselves. This compassion that it arises. And, well, the, one of the greatest benefits in meditating the sufferings of Jesus Christ is to reap sorrow and contrition for our offenses. There is nothing better than the passion as to show us the enormity of sin. The quality of the remedy necessary to be applied are to give us an idea of the quality of the disease. Nothing can give us so clear a sight of the grievousness of sin as to think that it was necessary that God should make himself man and by his sufferings make satisfaction for us to the divine justice. Saint Bernard says so. He said, by considering the remedy, I see the greatness of my peril. Therefore, one of the greatest fruits we can reap on the meditation of the sufferings of Jesus Christ is to deplore, to detest our sins, which cost our Lord so much. All the sufferings in his body, you have the, uh, we put for the Passion Tide, uh, the Holy Shroud, but not only in his body, but in his soul, all what he suffered without any consolation as it was from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head, as, uh, as uh, Prophet Isaiah says, there, was, there is nothing sound in him. Our sins were the cause of the crown of thorns that so cruelly pierced our Lord's head. Our sins were the cause of the cruel whipping which tore his second body all over. It is us who have sinned. It is us who deserved his, his cross. It is us, in fact, who merited these injuries and all these calumnies and reproaches which our Lord has suffered for us. It was for our inordinate desire of riches that our Lord hanged naked upon the cross. 
for our pride. He was reputed a fool, treated as uh, one feeble, miserable, crowned with thorns. For our vanity, he was scorned as a sinner. His thumb was afflicted with gall and vinegar in punishment for our gluttony. His hands and feet were pierced by nails in punishments of all our evil works. Well, you, we can meditate on all the sufferings of our Lord and all the redemption He did for our souls. And this cannot but lead us to contrition of our sins. A real sorrow for having often offended God. A remedy for our past sins. But not only, not only that, also to prevent us from falling again, from relapsing in these same sins or committing other sins. Another benefit in meditating the passion of Christ is to bring to our souls a great love of God. Nothing moves us more to love than to see ourselves loved. Jesus Christ manifested in his passion an extreme love for our souls. And this cannot but inflame ourselves with love and gratitude towards Him in return. The charity of God towards us appeared the most as during His Passion, as He offered His sufferings and His death on the cross for us, even when we were sinners. And our Lord suffered all these contempts and pains for all the men in the world and he offered them particularly for everyone in particular as if had, it had been but one alone in the whole world to say we can say all of us it is for me that our Lord died on the cross for my own sins Moreover, our Lord suffered all these torments for the very enemies who inflicted them and shed his precious blood to satisfy for the sins which his persecutors committed in, in, in shedding his blood. He prayed for them upon the cross. He excused them to his Father. And he offered his passion, his sacrifice even for those who abhorred him, to honor those who dishonored him, to give freedom to those who apprehended him, to give rest to those who afflicted him, to give eternal life to those who inflicted upon him this most cruel death. Well, who can refrain from loving him who has so much loved us? God has first loved us. And our Lord who wanted himself to suffer, who willed to, be, to suffer his passion, has to uh, manifest his love to us. Only a drop of his blood would have been already infinite value to redeem us all, but he wanted his passion as to inflame our hearts with charity. So after this contrition and this love of God, which we can reap from the meditation upon the passion of Christ, lastly, this meditation shall drive us to the imitation of the virtues of Jesus Christ. 
the Son of God, came into this world to redeem us by his death and his sufferings, and also to give us a perfect model, example of all his virtues. At the Last Supper, our Lord, when uh, he knelt down <coughs> to wash the feet of his disciples in a great act of humility, he said to them, I have given you an example that you do as I have done to you. And St. Peter, he said later, Jesus Christ has suffered for us, leaving you an example that you may follow his footsteps. Our Lord exercised poverty, renouncing all things, even to his very garments. He remained naked upon the cross. With his poverty, he uh, practiced humility, embracing all kinds of contempt. He exercised most heroic meekness in the midst of uh, so many soldiers acting as wild beasts to tore his body apart. He remained like a man, without speaking, without defending himself and suffered all this such fortitude and patience while well, and all the virtues. All this should be how meditation these coming days, dear faithful. It will be a very poor comprehension of uh, understanding of the mystery of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ to say, well, I love God, God loves me, and therefore, well, what's about to suffer in my life? Well, we have to imitate the virtues of Jesus Christ, and we have to embrace also our own crosses. We also have to act like Simon of Cyrene, I read to you here the imitation of Christ as to encourage ourselves to um, take up our own crosses. It is named the Royal, Royal Road of the Holy Cross. <coughs> Beautiful saying of the imitation of Christ. In the cross is salvation. In the cross is life. In the cross is protection from enemies. In the cross is infusion of heavenly sweetness. In the cross is strength of mind. In the cross <coughs> is joy of spirit. In the cross is highest virtue. In the cross is perfect holiness. There is no salvation of soul nor hope of everlasting life but in the cross. <coughs> Well, in first school, that's, when we read that, we understand uh, why the, the saints uh, not only uh, suffer, but will to suffer and uh, kiss their crosses, the martyrs kiss their cross. St. Lawrence asking to be burnt the other side, you know, because they wanted to resemble our Lord. And because they knew that through the Good Friday, we can find life. And if we die for ourselves, we will share also in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must die to ourselves to find life. And this is a spiritual life. This is our justification. This is holiness. It's quite simple, in fact, summed up into two movements of our soul, the hatred of sin and the desire for God. Die to sin in order to live unto God. That is the cross. And that's all about what a Christian life, a Catholic life is. 
If there were anything better or more useful for man's salvation, our Lord would have shown it by his example, by his word. So this is the Catholic teaching. This is our faith. The reality of our faith. This is what all Christian generations have understood. Those generations of uh, uh, holy uh, fathers and mothers of families who suffered, who suffered in a Christian manner, who accepted their sufferings, who accepted their difficulties with joy, who were examples to their children in suffering and in pain. In, uh, they knew how to support their pains with our Lord Jesus Christ. And these were the generations of Christians' families which bore so many vocations. It, it was in that that vocations were born, in the example which their parents could give in, of knowing how to live with our Lord Jesus Christ, to suffer with our Lord Jesus Christ, to pray with our Lord Jesus Christ, to assist at the holy sacrifice of the Mass with such faith, with such piety, with a spirit of self salvation as victims along with our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the Catholic life. Well, the affairs will behold what abundance of matter we have here for meditating on the passion of the Son of God. We should find there, therein matter enough for our whole life. The meditation of the passion will encourage us to love and serve God with all our strength, will unite, transform, conform us to Christ and convert our souls. I end with the words of Saint Bonaventure. He said, Nothing is more salutary than every day to meditate on the excess of the pains which Christ suffered for the love of us. The wounds of Christ move even the hardest and inflame the coldest hearts. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Ghost of God. Oh, 
Abispoque peccatoribus.
et omnia secula secula. Précieuse salutaribus moniti et de divine institution et formati, à Deus dicere, Pater nostre qui es in celis, sanctifice tu nomen tuum, advenia tenium tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem. Se libera nos Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum. Et cum spiritu tuo. Oh, oh, oh. 
Dominus Vobiscum. Potenza Deus, eterno filho e espelho, santo e santo. Dá-me a sua visão de Deus, santo e 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 sant